You are wonderful. You are powerful. You are worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is worthy. Anybody know he's worthy? Anybody know he's worthy? Has he been good to you? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I want to give the Lord praise. Amen. For all that he has done. We are trying to diversify um, the nature of our Sunday, Sunday services, in particular Sunday evening services. I do recognize that sometimes the membership um, tend to shy away from Sunday night service. For one reason or another, they say most Christians sick after 5 p.m. on a Sunday and are healed miraculously 5 o'clock the next morning. Um, I don't know. But, um, but I, I'm also cognizant of the fact that most times on a Sunday night, we have mostly members. And so it's a wonderful opportunity for us to have some discussion. So I wanted to engage us in a little discussion this evening. Uh, we have a roving microphone, so at any point you'd like to contribute to the discussion, please feel free to do so. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Um, and I want us to read alternative verse 18. Amen. So we're going to be talking about prayer this evening. It's about prayer, amen, and a few things about prayer that I think are important. But if I find Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Yes? You found it? Ephesians 6, verse 10. This is Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. All right? So I'll read verse 10. We can stand just for this one scripture and then we can be seated. So it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. No, hold on. This is your verse now, verse 11. I read verse 10. You For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Together, praying always with all prayer, and supplication in this spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let's just bow our heads, amen. Just lift our hands, just ask the Lord to speak to our hearts. Lord, help me pray, folks. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. You are in our presence right now, Lord. You know the condition of our hearts. I pray, Lord, that you will help us in this little discussion. Oh God, to be honest, Lord, to just speak. Lord, anoint me to speak the word to your people. Oh God, anoint me, Lord Jesus. A useless lump of clay, oh God, to impart something, Lord, that will resonate with your people, that will be the hearts of those who will watch in years to come. Oh God, as we bond ourselves to get ready for your coming, Lord, help us, Lord, to have an attitude of worship and praise. We give thanks. And praise in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. 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 Clap your hands and you may be seated. 
Amen. The Apostle Paul was a very intriguing character um, in Scripture because we all know that he was a Pharisee. We know that he was one of originally a part of the religious elite of his day. Uh, we also knew that the Apostle Paul was a persecutor of the church. And it is interesting that this letter was written to the church in Ephesus. Because you will find that later on in the book of Revelation, by the time John, who was the last disciple or apostle, was writing, the church had fallen from its steadfastness to the point where John said they had left their first love. But at this point in writing, Paul puts pen to people in the last chapter of this book and the letter that he was writing. And he said to them, he said, finally, or this is the last thing I want to say. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the what? In the power of his might. If I tell you that I'm going to give you an instruction, I tell you when you go outside, don't be scared of anything that you see. No matter how scary it is, it is as fake. And as you walk through the door, you see something in a gorilla suit that shout out at you. No matter how I prepare you for it, you might jump, right? But the mere fact that I tell you, don't be scared about anything that you see. I'm giving you a preparation that you're Just going to encounter something scary. Are you with me? So if Paul is telling the church to be strong, there must be a reason why he's telling them to be strong. It suggests to me that they were going to be facing difficult circumstances, trials, problems. Are you with me, folks? Now, he didn't tell them to be strong in their own strength. Because the Bible says that we really are just mortal flesh at the end of the day. So he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his wife, of his mind. He then says in verse 11 that we have to put on the, not just the armor, but you have to put on the whole armor so that he may be able to stand against the wiles. What is wild? W-I-L-E-S. Anybody? Trick. It's a trick. You have to be able to stand against the tricks of the devil. So when you talk about wiles of the devil, it's the strategies that the enemy uses. Now, I want everybody to open your Bible and look at verse number 12. I, I struggled with this verse for a while. Because Paul is then saying to us, we wrestle. Now, notice, he didn't say we are going to play karate. Or we are going to play boxing. But he says we are going to wrestle. Wrestling is one of those fights that has no rules. So you don't go into wrestling and the man tell you you cannot hit below the belt. You can't do anything. So when we're in this battle, understand that your Christian walk is a war. <laughs> Am I getting to you? This Christian battle is a war. Now, Paul was using the depiction of the Roman soldier to explain the armor of God. But he says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So... Please do not focus on the neighbor that is giving you trouble. Or on the boss that you think hates you. Oh Lord. Or on the increase in salary that you think is unfair. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But the Bible says we wrestle against what? Principal demonic powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in what? 
in high places. Here's why this battle that we have is a difficult one. Number one, it is a wrestling match where there's no rule. Number two, we're wrestling against spiritual forces. And by nature, spiritual forces, you cannot see them. So imagine you're in a wrestling match with an invisible enemy. You don't know how to brace and when to brace. You don't know when they're going to send out a serpent to hit you or a piece of cheer. That's a difficult battle. And so because of that, Paul says, because you're wrestling against things that you cannot see, he says, therefore, we have to take on the what? The whole what? Armor. Now, he says we're going to stand in an evil day. This was written a long time, you know. If the evil day was then, imagine what he would be saying, no. And then he says, in verse 14, stand therefore having your loins. Your loins. All the weapons of the soldier in those days buckle into his loins. There's a belt that he carried that everything fastened into. And so the first thing that Paul is saying, that if you are going to be an outstanding soldier in this battle, you have to have a loins that is girt about with what? Truth. So there's no such thing as a lying Christian. And we do it all the time, you know. We say something and we say a joke, me and me. Lord. Our lines must be girt about with what? With truth. And then now, at the front now, and at the back, the breastplate must be a breastplate of what? Righteousness. So follow me now. Your lines girt about with truth. Inside the belt of truth has to be righteousness. All right now. Then now he goes down to the feet. And he says, your feet must be shod with the what? The preparation of the gospel of what? Peace. What must govern where you go? Your movement is not running to spread gossip and talk about somebody else. But your, your going about must be circumscribed by evangelism. Spreading the good news. Of Jesus Christ to somebody else. Then now he says above all. Take the what? The shield of speaking in tongues. The shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench. All the fiery darts. Of the wicked. Now what used to happen. That the Roman soldiers used to. Used to soak their shields. In liquid because the enemy would have some poisonous and some darts that they would fling and you wouldn't have time enough to react so when it hits the shield it would actually be quenched or out when it hits the water that is soaked in the shield and the Bible is saying what should soak our life must be faith Why is that important? Because the Bible said the enemy comes as a roaring lion. Seeking who may devour. He comes to intimidate. And boy, I can tell you, I have had my battles. I get scared sometimes. Worry sometimes. My wife after all sometimes said, Pastor, if you preach about faith. And so Paul is saying, that you have to have the shield where you are, you're going to be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now look at verse 17. It says, take the what? The helmet of salvation. So you have to, you have to, you have to cover your head. Because the Bible said, thou will keep him in perfect peace. Who's what? Mind. There is a battle on now for the mind. So he says, salvation have to cover your head. Have you ever gone down to prayer, your mind stray? Yes. 
you in church, but your, your body's here, but your mind gone a foreign. Serious thing. And sometimes the mind straight till you're gone, go sleep. And it's when lily water drop on your foot, you realize that you, was, you were praying, but you're asleep now. Real thing we're talking, right? All right. No. If you go in a bottle and you have on the belt and you have on the breastplate and your foot cover up everything like that and you have a shield and that's all you have in the bottle, eventually you are going to be defeated because all of those things are just defensive weapons. Right? So the enemy throws something, you can do so, you can do so. The only offensive weapon that you have is the sword. So I'm saying you have to take the sword of the spirit, which is what? Word of God. And Paul in another writing says, you must not read the Bible, you must study. So I read the newspaper, but don't ask me what is on page a3 of the newspaper. What is the headline? I can't tell you. But we must know the word of God. You must study it and know it. Now when you're studying the Bible, it's important for you to look at the punctuation marks. So look at the end of verse 17. When Paul says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, he tells it is what? The word of God. What is what come after that? What kind of punctuation? A colon. They taught me in English that the colon goes before a statement that is coming that is going to expand or explain what went before. Right, English teacher? So it go right. So now Paul is telling us all of these things that came down from before. All the weapons that you have from verse 14 to verse 17. All of them are important. But they will only work if you are praying. So verse 18, let's read it together again. Paul says what? Praying hot, always, with all prayer. So why am I saying praying with prayer? Why didn't he just say praying? <laughs> you can't say a prayer. All right, so Paul says praying always, but remember there are different types of prayer, right? So he said with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Now, Praying in the spirit is different from just praying. There are some people that go down, and we're going to see it a little later in the discourse, that does use a lot of words. But words don't frighten the enemy. What frightens the enemy is when you get deep in the spirit and begin to groan. Because turn to Romans 8 verse 26. Let me show you something. If we're going to pray in the spirit, then we have to have this understanding. Romans 8, 26, what it says. Well, well, let's alone. Take your time, take your time. Go again for me. Likewise, Likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Right. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Sometimes when you're praying in the Spirit, you don't have words to say. Because sometimes you go down to prayer and you're, you're, you are so overwhelmed by the circumstance that you can't find words. And that is when the ums and the ahs mean a lot to God. To you it don't mean anything but it's your spirit connecting with the spirit of God. 
And it's making intercessions for you. Can somebody lift your hands and worship the Lord? Now Paul says, pray with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And he also says, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. For all saints. That means, Sister Patrice, if I must pray for all saints, there can't be anybody in church that I don't talk to. Because God says supposed to pray for everybody. So I can't say I'm going to pray for everybody, but Lord, you know me and Benjamin not talk, so I'm not pray for him. Can't work. No. Is there a place where prayer is inappropriate? Where you should not pray? Yes or no? Is there any scripture that tells us that we can pray everywhere? No, I don't want... Yes, yeah, yeah, sister. You're not putting up your hand. Yeah, yes, brother Kibo. All right, so brother Kibo is saying, the Bible said that when you're praying in St. Matthew, you must go into your closet. So, but brother, but brother Kibo, if that is the case, we shouldn't pray in church, you know. But, but, if you notice what Jesus was saying, do you know? He was saying, don't be like the Pharisees. Because the, the reason they're praying in, on the street side is because they want to be seen. That is the reason. So he was making a contrast between trying to pray publicly to be seen vis-a-vis -vis praying in private, but God reward you publicly. So that was the, the thing. I want you to look, though, at... 1 Timothy 2 verse 8. 1 Timothy 2 verse 8. What does Paul say in 1 Timothy 2 verse 8? I will therefore that men pray what? Everywhere. Lifting up what? Holy hands without wrath and doubting. Now, we have some very sophisticated Christians. So when they're in church, Terry, they don't mind lifting up their hands. and say, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. But when they go in the restaurant now, and people look in, and do a thing like this. And that is them prayer, them bless the food. You, when the man bring the food, you don't know what's in the food. You know? We can't be shy to bless the food publicly. Oh, Lord. The Lord embarrassed me one day, you know. I went to a hospital. Never forget it. Oxford Medical. And a lady, I was sitting on the bench waiting to see the doctor. And a lady came in with her husband. And in about five minutes, she was a screaming, loud. Go get the doctor, get the doctor, I'm in a pain. And the Lord spoke to me and said, lay your hand on her and pray. And I'm like, Lord, there's so many people here. And I'm kind of shy. And the lady started to get loud. And it's like the Lord said, all right, I'm going to turn up the volume on you. And she started to scream. Come here, Reverend Michael. I have to be honest with you, right? So, Rev, to be honest with you, I never went like this. In the name of Jesus. I never do that. Because I was shy. And I don't know what way happened. So I kind of pushed my hand behind the husband. And rest my hand and I was like, in the name of Jesus. I was like, the lady still a screaming. The Lord said, so that's not what I want. I said, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus right now. I ask you to touch this lady. Before me done pray, no noise. I'm like, what? It worked. God was like, yes, you must learn to pray everywhere. 
Sometimes God put you in a circumstance that his name is magnified. So he said, make mention that his name is what? Exalted. How is it going to happen? It will happen when you get thrown in a situation. Are you afraid to lift up your voice and pray? When the rest of man see each other, Ja Rastafari, and Rastafari are dead long time. So when you get in a circumstance, come on folks, don't be afraid to let somebody know you're a one God apostolic, believe in prayer, church. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 All right. Now we're going to get into a little bit of trouble. James 5. Benjamin, you have to get ready to go with the mic now. I want... No, I want somebody else. I want Brother Justin to read this one. James chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. Everybody follow? James 5, verse 13. Ready, Brother Justin? No. Yeah, read for me. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Right, verse 16 now. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. Right. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. All right. So, the, the, the scripture context here is telling us what we must do when somebody is sick, right? So, Paul is saying, if anybody is of you is afflicted, let him pray. If anybody is merry, let him sing psalms. But if somebody is sick among you, call for the elders of the church. So the oil thing is not fake. It's not something that we just drum up. So we must anoint him in oil in the name of the Lord. Now let me make this point clear. That there's nothing in the oil. Right? You can use any kind of oil. John's baby lotion can work too. It don't really matter. Because there's nothing in the oil. He said anointing in oil in the what? In the name of the Lord. Now, he says the prayer of faith shall do what? Save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So here's my question. Have you ever prayed for something? And when you finish praying... You don't get a positive result. Let me see you lift your hand. You pray. All right. So my question is, why? Why? Nobody want to? Yes, Brother Benjamin, there's a hand behind you. Yes, Sister Terry. Um, good night. Could it be that uh, what you prayed for for example, I prayed for this orange pencil. Right. But the Lord is saying, if you get this orange pencil, you will exalt yourself. So I'm not going to give you an orange pencil. I might give you a purple pencil or a purple pen. So what you prayed for, he can give you what you pray for, which is okay, good for you. Right. But he could be giving you something better. So, but you know, in the human... Right. In the human, we're all going to feel some type of way that we don't get what we prayed for. So, right. you know. Excellent. You say a purple pen, sir, pen, or I mightn't give him none at all. Very good. Sister, Sister Patrick say you might get a crayon. Sister Danny, can you want to say something? Yes, Sister Danny. Please feel free to talk. You know. Yes, Sister Danny. Right. So, sometimes there are some situations that if you pray and you ask God to change a situation or your situation and you find that the situation is not changing. In some cases, it's because God wants to change you before. It's not that he's not going to change the situation, yes. but there is something in you that he needs to change 
before he can bring you out of that situation. So there's something you must learn. There's some tests you need to pass or something. Right. But we have to put ourselves in a position where whatever we need to learn from a situation, however we need to grow from it, we grow from it because that's usually the intention. Very good. Anybody else want to? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Brother Laron, Apostle Spence. Yes, Brother Laron. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> um, I, I, I know it's on the script, in the scripture it says the prayer of faith. Yes. And so it is possible that there are prayers that are made, but they're not made in faith. And I think earlier on in James 1, it says if any man asks anything of the Lord, he must do it in faith. Right. Nothing wavering. Because anybody that prays wavering will not receive anything from the Lord. So I think there are some prayers that we would make, but we are not praying in faith, but maybe something else, just a desire, but not faith. That's very true there. Brother Justin, we have more, Ben, we have more hands, sister, my sister there, and then sister Lone. That's a very excellent point, Brother Laron. Um, even as humans, sometimes, we're praying and we're wondering if God will really do it for me. Um, some people say we wonder if God will really do it. Right? So, so we sometimes do. That is, that's an excellent point. Go ahead. Okay, um, good night. Well, mine is like a question. Okay, the Bible said, ask, and it yes. shall be given. Yes. It also said, you ask, and you receive not. Right. Because you ask for me. So, is sometimes what we are praying for is a me? Um, okay, so, so she asked a question that sometimes, Bible said, we ask, and you receive not, because you ask a miss that you may consume it upon your loss. So, there are times that we are asking God, as Brother Lawrence said, not, not necessarily in faith, but there's another, there's another critical reason why I believe it happens, um, which I'm going to get to in the next scripture. But that's a very, very key question. We're going to come back to it, right? Sister Lone, go ahead. So, sir, many times we ask for things, but God see and know that we don't need to get those things that we're asking for. Mm -hmm. Because it might, you know, it might give it to us and it becomes a detrimental to us. Yes. And another thing, sometimes it's not the will of God for whatever we are praying for. Mm -hmm. And if it's not the will of God, it makes no sense because God is not going to give it to you. All so right. many times we ask for things, but, you know, it's not according to the will of God. It's not in sync with the word of God. So God is not going to give us those things. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Um... All right, so I like the answer. Anybody else want to comment? Okay, excellent, excellent. Sometimes the Lord is saying, wait. Sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes it's just no. And sometimes it's wait. I will give it to you, but not right now. Mm -hmm. Now, Sister Simpson, you just summarized the whole lesson that we have. My pastor used to say, God answers prayers in three ways. Yes, no, and wait. Now, the wait part is where we have a problem. My brother had a sticker on his Bible, Lord, grant me patience, but please hurry. We have a problem with waiting. David said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall what? Strengthen thy heart. But when done, he said, wait, I say, on the Lord. There's also another scripture in Isaiah chapter 40 that says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is what? Where there is no searching of his understanding, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth. And even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall what? They shall mount up with wings. We like that part. 
mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not what? Faint. But here's the part about that now. The waiting on the Lord and the renewing like eagles is a painful process. The, we, the reason the eagle can fly so high and so fast and so long is because every now and then it has to pick out all of its feathers and wait until the feathers grow back. And you will pass and see that eagle bloody because sometimes the feathers cannot come out. And him have to rub himself on a rock, a sharp piece of rock, and look a flesh come out. So you pass and see that eagle looking very ugly, cannot move, because sun burning him now, nothing to move now, and the rain wet him. But guess what? He's waiting until the feathers grow back. And then a couple months down the road, you see a beautiful eagle. And you say, what a pretty bird. But it was the same ugly bird that has now renewed its strength. Can I put a spiritual lens on that? Sometimes in our Christian walk, we look ugly. God of mercy. And somebody passed and said, what an ugly looking creature. But just give me a few moments. Let me renew my strength in the Lord. I will fly again. I will fly again. Somebody lift your hands and worship the Lord. But there's another reason. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Oh, I love this. Isaiah 43. We're going to read together. Everybody, if you have a Bible, take it up and read it. Everybody. Verse 1 to 3. You find it? Let's go. What it says? But now, thus that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, do not fear not. Why? For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the what? waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall they flame kindle upon thee. Why? For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Israel Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. So, how are you going to walk through the fire, go through the river, if God deliver you from everything as soon as you pray? Oh Lord, some people look at me like, Pastor, I don't like that one. He says, when thou passest through the waters, the important thing is that I am going to what? Be with thee. And he says, that when you walk through the rivers, they're not going to overflow thee. I wish it had said, when you sprint through the fire. But it said, when you walk, Lord have mercy, because sometimes you're going through hell. But it's a process. The Lord said, when you walk through the fire, you're not going to be burned. Because the fire has a way of purifying the goal. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Now, go to what Brother Laron was saying now. Here's some condition for positive results in prayer. St. John 15, verse 6 and 7. If a man abide in me, abide not in me, it's cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall what? Be done. How many of us read our Bible every single day? Sometimes a few days slip me. I have to be honest with you. 
So the Lord is saying, if you, you have to abide in me and my words have to what? Abide in you. If the words abide in you and the words just will flow out of you, then the first instinct and the first reaction when something happens is not just to let something fly out of your mouth. The words must dwell in you richly. That it impacts what you say and how you respond. Now, Matthew chapter 18, another one. So we're going to, this one going to give us trouble now. Matthew chapter 18. Um, Benjamin, give Sister Spence. Sister Spence, you can read this one for me. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 to 20. I was talking this one. <laughs> Sorry. Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, 18 to 20. Yes. 20. Yes. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verse 19. Again I say unto you, yes. that if two of you shall agree on earth, that if two of you shall agree on earth mm -hmm. as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done yes. for them of my Father which is in heaven. Right. Verse 20. For where, for where two or three are gathered together in yeah. my name, yes. there am I in the midst of them. All right. So, St. John is saying we have to abide in the Lord. And Matthew is telling us about the power of agreement. All right? So that's one of the reasons why I always love to encourage us to pray one for another. There's power in agreement. When I say, I agree with you, I am, I am giving you like a blank check to ask for what you want. No, it's important that we abide in God's will. All right? Now, this is critical because if we don't do that, we will ask for things that are outside of God's will. And when the Bible said, delight thyself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Many people said, okay, if I delight myself in the Lord, then anything that I want, I'm going to get. But that cannot be what scripture means. Because I can want some things that are not good for me. What it is saying is when I delight in the Lord, He gives me the desires of my heart that He wants me to have. And once I do that, now that I am in His will, it is already in His will for me. So I can now ask and I will receive. Because he has already given me that desire. So I not going to want to go blow up the house. Are you with me, folks? The other thing we have to remember. The, we know 1 Corinthians 13, 9 says that now we know in part. So we don't know everything. All right? We don't know everything. Now, everybody know the pattern prayer in St. Matthew chapter 6. Right? Jesus was telling his disciples how to pray. He says what? Our Father, you know it? Who art in what? Heaven. Hallowed what? Come to people, be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy what? Where? On earth. As it what? As it is in heaven. So when I'm praying, it's important for me to ensure there is an alignment of my will with God's will. Very, very critical. All right? So, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. 
I want everybody to look at that one. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. It says, In whom also we have what? Obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the what? The purpose of him who worketh all things after the what? The counsel of his own will. So God works everything after his will. Which is why when Jesus was in the garden, he says, If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So we have to understand that we can pray, but ultimately God's will must be done. So sometimes I'll be honest to say that Lord give me a strong witness. Somebody's going to be delivered and healed and everything. And I can say, I believe that the Lord can and I believe the Lord will. But if I don't know what is the Lord will in a situation, I cannot tell you the Lord will do it. I can say the Lord can do it, and I will pray that the Lord's will be done because I don't know what the Lord's will is. And now we only know in part. Now, I want to show you something. You will remember the book of Acts chapter 19 that the Bible says, and this is the only place in the Bible where we see this reference. The Bible said the Lord wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Anybody remember what was, what was so special about the miracles? You want to look? Acts chapter 19, verse number 11. Look at verse 12 in particular. And see what was special about the miracles that God did through the apostle Paul. So from his body were brought unto the sick and kerchiefs or aprons. Yes. And the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. All right. So the, the miracles that God worked through the apostles' ministry were so powerful, Sister Shernet, that he didn't even send a word. People just come to him. Ask him, and he would, I imagine, pray over their clothes and give them. And they go lay it on people that have demon, and the demon fly out. And the people sick, and boom, the handkerchief come, sickness gone. That would suggest to me, Brother Laron, that if Paul's ministry was so powerful, that not even when Paul go and lay him hand on the people and pray, but just taking a handkerchief from him and go and lay on somebody, them heal. That if Paul pray, then God must answer for him prayer. In the positive. And another thing, sir, that the people believe in Paul's prayer. Well, that's another thing. Well, we don't know if the people that were sick believe, we don't know. No, those that brought the apron. Yeah, the oh, yes, oh, yes. But we're going to look at something now. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. This is the second to last scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We read three verses. Verses 7 to 9. Sister Cardell, you can read it for me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, though the abundance of the rev revelation there was given me to me in the flesh, 
the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For the thing, thing I besought the Lord Christ. Hold on, hold on. For this thing I besought the Lord, how many times? Christ. Three times. So Paul said, pray about it three times. That, that, that what? It might depart from me. That it might depart from me. And he said unto me, Yes. My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may, may rest upon me. There, so, yes, no, that's fine, that's fine. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities mm -hmm. and reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So here's Paul saying now, I went down in prayer about something that's affecting me. That is unpleasant. And I prayed one time and it don't go away. Two times and it don't go away. Three times and it still don't go away. So now Paul says, I have to find out now what is God's will in this situation. And God says, Paul, I am not going to take it away. I put that on you to keep you humble. So Paul says, know that God says, I will not take it away, but I will give you the grace to endure. And sometimes that is how God deals with us. Oh Lord, I wonder if I'm talking to somebody. He gives grace to deal with it. And can I tell you that if God never give you grace, it would have make you mad. Because there are some people that go through less than that and lose their mind. But there's a God that gives you grace. And Paul said, because I have that grace, and it is sufficient for me, I can glory in my stresses and problems. Oh Lord, I want to talk to somebody. That even now you can lift your hands in the midst of trial and say, thank you Lord. Oh God. My last reference, Job 23. Verse 8. Yes, Sister Sharman, can you oblige? Now, it's one thing to pray and get an answer from the Lord. That is nice. Even if it's not the answer that you want, but at least Sister Ruth and God tell you something. But there's another time when you pray. And you neither feel nothing, nor hear nothing. Oh God, we're talking to somebody now. What do you do in those times? Do you just decide to quit? And give up? Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hear what Job says. Read Sister Charmaine. Verse 1. Verse 8. Job 22, 8. Behold. Yes. I go forward. Yes. But he is not there. Yes. And backward. But I cannot perceive him. On the left hand. Where he doth work. But I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand. That I cannot see. Hold on, Sister Charmin. Let's go again. So Paul says, Behold, I go where? Forward. Yes. But he's not there. All right. So we say, Forward still. It's Jehovah's, Jehovah's will. So Paul says, You know what? I'm going forward. Job. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so Job said, I'm going forward, right? 
But what? It's not there. So what? And backward. Backwards. I'm sorry. No, no. Let me, let me reverse. But what? I cannot perceive him. Cannot see him. On the left hand. I'm saying, I go on the left now. Where he doth work. Where I normally find him. But I cannot behold him. But I can't see him. So I'm saying, if I go forward and he's not there, I'm backward, I can't perceive him. On the left hand side, you know, in the middle of player because it will be always find him. He must be on the right hand side. He hideth himself. But when right he's on the right, God is hiding. And I cannot see him. So I can't see him. But he knoweth the way that I oh, take. Oh, have mercy. This is where faith comes in now. So Job saying, after I've got an erection, if you notice, forward, backward, right, left or left, right. That is north, south, east, west. Every other direction is enveloped in that. And Job said, God is not there. But Job had a faith in God. He says, but Sister Sean. But he knoweth the way that I take. Yes. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Oh Lord have mercy. So Job is saying, all of this is just a trial. And at the end of the day, I am going to come out better than how I went in. Oh, hallelujah. Can I speak to somebody this evening? Can I talk to somebody now? Can I get down to your address and let you understand that Job is saying, when I can't feel God, when I can't feel, when my prayers feel like it's hitting the ceiling and bouncing back on the floor, God is still there. God is a child, a process to take me through. Stand and lift your hands and worship him. Oh, Jesus. I want to just do something a little different. Come back, Sister Rutan. So I want everybody to get a prayer partner. Get a partner. Get a partner. Get a partner. Jesus. I want you to ask the person, is there something that I can pray to the Lord for you? Is there something you want me to pray to the Lord, specific? Talk to them. Is there anything I can pray? I can pray for, for you. Oh, Jesus. Come, Benjamin. Come be my partner. So everybody, the Bible says you have to confess, you know, confess your fall, confess what you want. All right? I want you to lift your partner's hand now. I'm going to sing the sicker song. No music. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench, Holy Ghost, this thirsty God. Oh, Jesus, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my Yes, 
Fill it up and make me whole. One more time. Here's my. I lift it up. Come and Bread of heaven, bread. Feed me, feed me. Here's my. Tell him again, here's my cup. Here's my. One more time. Here's my cup. Fill it up. And many. Listen to me. When you're going to pray this prayer, I want you to pray in faith believing. And when the person is praying for you, I want you to pray with the same exuberance you would pray if when you open your eyes, the very thing you're praying for just came through. Because the Bible says, when you pray the things that you desire, believe that you have them and you shall receive them. Let's go ahead and pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord.
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Lift your faith, lift your faith in the name of Jesus. He's in the room, he's in the room, he's in the room, he's in the room, he's in the room. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. How we speak it by faith, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We speak it by faith, Lord. We speak it by faith. Oh, we speak it by faith in the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, in your name, Jesus, in the name, Jesus. In the name, Jesus, in the name, Jesus, in the name, Jesus, in the name, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, 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 we bless your name. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come, your kingdom come, your kingdom come. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, somebody just give him some worship. <laughs> Jesus. 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 Well, if for about 30 seconds, you can just let out a praise on the inside. Just let out a praise. Let's let out something loud, something that... Let the enemy know we're here. Jesus! 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 We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallowed be thy name. How would you praise him if he came through for you? Come on. You'd be dancing the aisle. You'll be on the top of your voice. You'll, you'll be screaming. You'll be letting out something. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 
Somebody just wave your hands in the house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lift your praise to the Lord. Lift your praise this to the Lord. Lift him higher in one accord. Lift your praise this to the Lord. Lift your praise, come on. Lift your praise this to the Lord. Lift your praise to the Lord. Lift him higher in one accord. Lift your praise. Somebody has a praise. Come on. To for he. done but um, Reverend Martin can you come here please Sister Patrice is feeling a little weak um, we're going to pray for her Sister Maureen I know you need prayer when you come Amen anybody needs special prayer I don't mean if you have a, like a cold but if you like us to anoint you and pray you can come as well in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we just stretch our hands towards Sister Patrice right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come Rev in the name of Jesus, 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 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Those of you that have been anointed, come down here. Just stay down here. Those of you that have been anointed for prayer, come. We're going to pray for you. Amen. Pray. Those of you that have been anointed, stay here. We're going to pray one with prayer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Brother Laron, could you come help me? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Deacon Reed, will you come help me pray? In the name of Jesus. Just spread out across. In the name of Jesus, wherever you come in, amen, just spread out right across, in a straight line across, amen. You just stretch your hands toward these people right now, we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's all pray together. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you. You have instructed us, Lord, if any is not well, Lord, we should call for the elders of the church and we should pray over them. Right now, upon the authority of your words, we lift up our sister before you. Lord Jesus, we claim right now strength in her body. In the name of Jesus, we pray for restoration of normalcy right now. Let your anointing right now rest upon her in the name of Jesus. Lord, as your church, as your body, we come before you, petitioning your throne, Lord. And we speak strength right now. In the name of Jesus, 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 right now, Lord. Oh God, upon the authority of your words, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will touch them, Lord. Touch Sister Dorothy, touch Brother Norman. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, by your stripes we're healed. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we lay our hands on them right now, Lord, and we speak healing in the name of Jesus, Lord. Whatever circumstances are prevailing right now, we come against it with your blood. We speak against it in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, 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 we speak. We speak, Lord Jesus. We speak restoration right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak victory right now. Victory right now in the name of Jesus. Upon the authority of your words, Lord. And by the power of your name, Jesus, we release healing right now. Oh God, we release the deliverance in this circumstance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we speak it by faith in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come Rev, help me lay your hands. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I wonder if you can start telling the Lord thanks. Uh, this is by faith though. You're telling him thank you. Uh, he's going to do it. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus. 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 Holy Ghost. Right now. We lift up our sister. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you break every chain, Lord. We come against this circulation situation and we plead your blood upon it right now, Lord Jesus. And we declare soundness from the sole of the feet to the crown of the head. We thank you, Lord, for what you will do and what you have already done. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Now, can you just find three people or four people to tell them I agree with you? Come on. 
I agree with you. I'm standing in agreement with you. In the name of Jesus. If two shall agree. In the name of Jesus. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you, my sister. Amen. Praise God. I agree with you. I agree with you, Brother Lauren. I agree with you, Deacon. Amen. I agree with you, Sister Ruby. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I agree with you. Praise the Lord. 